on this edition of the Self Publishing Show. Market is oversaturated with the same photography, and there are not a lot of the new stock photos. So, DAS modeling is improving, and it's important that we have new faces, and that we don't we are not limited to this what stocks can offer. Publishing is changing. No more gatekeepers. No more barriers. No one standing between you and your readers. Do you want to make a living from your writing? Join indie bestseller Mark Dawson and first-time author James Blatch as they shine a light on the secrets of self-publishing success. This is the Self Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Hello and welcome to the Self Publishing Show with me, James Blatch, and me, Mark Dawson. Uh, so, Mark Dawson, uh, here we are. It's just the calm after the storm, isn't it? I was kept awake till about one o'clock in the morning. We had the most amazing electrical show last night, and I think you had it whilst we were on a webinar talking about the fundamentals of self-publishing uh, to a very responsive and uh, dynamic crowd last night. We had about five or 600 people on it uh, at one point, which was great. Um, and we should say uh, it was all uh, a lot of questions about our 101 course. And before we do anything else, say we have extended it for this weekend only. So that's it. Closes up Sunday night. So if you're listening to this on Friday, the 27th of June, your very last chance uh, until the autumn to uh, sign up for 101. And we still have our COVID special 24 month payment plan to make it as affordable as possible. Uh, if you go to selfpublishingformula.com forward slash 101. 101. Very good. Yes, absolutely. So, um, yeah, good webinar last night. Here comes my dog. If, if anyone, if you hear things, is extremely busy uh, at the moment. I've got at least, I think, half a dozen vans in the drive outside over there. The dog hasn't had a walk yet. Um, I've well, got, the barn is nearly finished. So, well, all, I'm looking forward going. to very soon. For certainly for people watching on YouTube, the the sight of you being in the barn, which would be amazing. It, yeah, it's not impossible that the next, we're recording two today, it's not impossible that the next one, so probably going out in early June, Tenth middle of June, June yeah. yeah, 10th of June might be from the barn, so we'll we'll see, we'll see, it's all looking very nice, but just a final energy to, to push over the line, which is uh, is required today. Final push, boys. Okay, good. Well, we've got a couple of other things to mention before our very special interview today. Uh, we have uh, we are getting close to our limit on seats for Self Publishing Show Live uh, 2022, which is at uh, the Queen Elizabeth Hall in the South Bank Centre on June the 28th and 29th. Uh, but you can still grab a ticket, or at least at the time of recording, if not broadcast, at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash SPS live. And uh, with the extra capacity, <clears throat> so there's no COVID restrictions now at all in the hall. With the extra capacity, uh, we have been able to offer some day only tickets. We know that some of you who work can only do one day. So you can do either the 28th or the 29th at half the price, obviously, of uh, the cost of the two day ticket. Um, all available there. Uh, and you could just come to the party on the evening of the 28th. Uh, looking forward to that. Um, we've been talking about some of the logistics in our meeting just now, and uh, it's all very exciting. Yeah, and there'll be industry people at, at the uh, at the party. So sponsored by BookBub, by Readsy and draft to digital and they'll all have um, members of staff. Actually, BookBub won't because they're not traveling, but ev everyone else will be there, plus um, plenty of others, uh, other people who, you know, Amazon will be there, and a good chance to, to kind of meet people and... Um, I hate to use, I hate networking. I don't like the word network at all, but it's a good chance to fill your little black book up with, with names and addresses. Find friends. Find friends, yes, exactly. Friend. Um, okay, and if you want to look the part, you can uh, even get the merch if you're watching on YouTube. Oh, there we go. I'm wearing my James, self James is so modeling nice. the 2022 t-shirt. Yes, yeah, very nice. <laughs> Um, yeah, it looks great. And the baseball caps look amazing. And they are going to mm. be uh, debuted at this year's show. But I think maybe you'll be able to get them in advance. But certainly you can go onto our website, selfpublishingformula.com, click on the merch banner and uh, pick we up We should probably wear them when we go to, to Vegas, shouldn't we? We should all, me, you and John and young Tom, should all have uh, matching T-shirts and caps. Now, I've got some bad news about Vegas. The Raiders have announced their schedule. And it oh, does, not, yeah. not, does not include a home game at oh, any that's point. A shame. They're away for two weeks in a row, would you believe? Mm, it does happen. On the road. So um, we won't be going to Raiders this time. Um, 
Okay, in fact, uh, I will be in Madrid next week. So if you happen to be in Madrid, in fact, at least one member of our community, uh, Karen Ingalls, has said to me, I'm in Madrid at the same time. So we're going to meet up there. And I know a few people are going to be there at that conference. Um, uh, come and say hello if you're going to the conference and you'll know what it is. It's a 20 Books Madrid uh, conference near the airport. Very glamorous. Um, but I'm looking forward to that. And I think, Mark, that's about it. So we can probably move on to our interview. We've got quite a lot of one, recordings. Oh, you've got something else to say? Yeah, one thing I should, about our conference, um, I think as this goes out, we should have live, uh, sorry, online tickets available. So we we are, um, as we did last time, we recorded had a, a professional film crew in with multiple cameras, pro mics. It was all very, very nicely put together, edited quite slickly. Um, and we sold... Quite a lot of tickets, actually. For yes, that. it was it was very popular. Um, well, it made us do... it went us from making a loss to breaking yes, even on the just, conference last time. So I'm quite even. keen that people buy these. They're twenty five dollars each, really cheap. Yep, twenty five dollars each, and it is. Um, so all of the uh, content will be included. Um, so all of the presentations with the slides and all, all that kind of good stuff will, will be included. So um, do we have a, a URL for that yet? Well, I'm I'm guessing I might be out of order here. We should have had this conversation before that it's going to be the same. Mm page you just will be able to click on a, a banner to buy just the live option so that's yes, selfpublishingformula.com yeah. forward slash sps live um, and yeah as mark says this is not like the normal stream you see kind of slow res stream of a conference this is a professionally produced version of the conference uh, mm. with its own production crew who are going to be there over the two days uh, it looks really good it takes about a, a week to put together after the end of the conference but it's there and it's been a really really useful course i know in its own right for people last year so 25 dollars can't go wrong can you and it could could put us back into well, i don't know if it'll get us to break even this time it's been a very expensive conference to put on but that's not really the point uh, anyway good value i think Absolutely, yes. Are we ready for our interviewee? Yes, we are. Our interviewee uh, was in Ukraine a few weeks ago uh, with her family, with her children, her son and her sister. Uh, she has managed to escape the country on a train. She talks about uh, that. Uh, but she's in Ukraine because she is part of a Ukrainian cover design company. Her name is Julia Roz Dubuchko, and uh, the company uh, Mublart. Uh, I've learned to say, is uh, a very well-known, very well-regarded cover design company, all based in Ukraine, all Ukrainians. Uh, of course, they've been massively disrupted by the war. But funnily enough, actually, their business side of it has not really because they got together very early on, planned how they're going to work around it, got the people who needed to be out. out. Obviously, a lot of the men have had to stay. Um, and we talk a bit about that. We talk a lot about cover design and cover art. Uh, here she is. Here's Julia. Mark and I will be back for a chat off the back of this. This is The Self-Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Julia Roz de Buchko, you had to give me a little lesson on, on saying your surname. I hope I didn't get it too wrong, but um, you are very welcome to The Self-Publishing Show. Delighted to have you here. Not just to talk about mobile arts, which we're going to in a minute, but because you are Ukrainian and you've been in, in the country as war broke out. And I'm delighted to say that you and your son, as I think your son as well, yeah, and now, my daughter. And your daughter are now in Germany. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I can't imagine what that upheaval's like. I think your husband's back in Ukraine. Let me just ask about him, first of all. Is he, what, what is he doing? Is he having to fight or...? Uh, now, like when the war started, he was um, just at home. He was with our kids and I was working. And uh, then uh, I got got to the village so that I thought it would be safer. And he went to territorial defense. So he stays in the city on the west in Chernobyl. Not Chernobyl, but Chernobyl. Chernobyl, yeah. And yes, and uh, he stays there. He's ter in territorial defense. So they are like uh, watching if everything's okay, if there are no saboteurs in the city, and uh, if uh, people are safe in the shelters and so on. So they have shifts, and uh, they, of course, are learning how to fight in case something comes to our city, but hopefully not. Not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and we have to say, we should say you're in the west of Ukraine, which obviously is being attacked. We know rockets are hitting it, but the Russian land offensive now seems to be concentrated in the Donbass region in the east. So that's some some amount of relief for you. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't worry a lot about the life of my husband. 
um, that's just hard to be a part, obviously. And I'm just hoping they will not send too many rockets to our city because uh, for now, um, our where uh, our soldiers can eliminate uh, lots of the bombs, uh, lots of the rockets. But I don't know. You you probably saw that some some rockets landed in Lviv already. Yeah. So you never know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what's it been like moving to Germany? And what, what was that process like? Did you have to stage yourself somewhere else before you found a home? Uh, well, I um, my husband took me to the railway station on the. Uh, in uh, Carpathians uh, because uh, the railway station uh, at Lviv was full, full and we couldn't really know if I will get to the train because couldn't, no one could uh, tell us how many people are there or whether that's full or not. And But I knew that there is uh, every day comes a train that can keep, pick up people and I had a baby. I have a baby. Uh, she is now eight mon- and months eight months and a five years old son. So I took also my sister, 15 years old, and we, uh, my husband drove us to this uh, railway station and we, um, well, it really, um, it went really well because when he saw that I'm with a baby, they let me through on the, I shouldn't, I didn't wait. And with this train, I got I got to uh, Czech Republic and then from Czech Republic and, and Czech Republic, uh, there were volunteers that uh, have offered uh, a stay for a night. I stayed for a night with kids and then we went to Germany because I have a brother here. And uh, then I went to my brother in uh, Turingen in Minau. He um, he could could provide a shelter for some time, but uh, unfortunately I couldn't stay there because there was not enough uh, like uh, rooms, uh, like not not enough not even one room so we okay. stayed there for a while and then i i started looking for um some long term like maybe a few months stay and i found a great family in bonn so now i uh, am in bonn and i live uh, in one room with my kids and with my sister and uh we have already we um then one more um uh, boy came that is friend from my from my of my sister and he is uh, without parents, so I now have four children. Right. <laughs> yeah, for some time. I, but I imagine your sister helps out a bit as well. Looking at fifteen, yeah, yeah. she helps out. So she's fifteen, so can, she can help with the baby. Uh, it's really good that I wasn't alone with two with two kids. It would be too hard. Yeah. So, but are you, are you all in one room? Yeah. I, I mean, uh, without a boy, boy lives in another family, and I, uh, my kids, and my sister live in one room. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, and how how's it? I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks lovely, and um, well, you know, it's it's safe, isn't it, for you? Yeah, uh, it's safe. That's the most important thing. I mean, uh, I have thought a lot because it's really hard to leave my husband, and he cannot see the kids. Uh, because yeah, and the the little one grows so fast, and um, that's really hard to see. And he just um, maybe he will um, study here in Germany. He know he knows learns German. He knows German uh, sh- uh, already, but he needs a little bit higher level to study in university so that he could come and we can be together. Because we really don't know how how long it will be. Yeah. So when you think about the future, what what are your thoughts on, on what's going to happen? Uh, I'm, I believe we can fight back. I, can, I believe we can uh, return our lands. We, I, can believe, I believe we can return Donetsk, Lugansk and Crimea. I know people who have uh, lived there. I know people who ha- had to leave their homes eight years ago and now they need to, <laughs> needed to leave Kiev again. Uh, and that's really painful for me. So I, I think these people deserve to get their homes back. And I, I think that Ukraine should uh, should uh, win this war, definitely, because it's really, we have paid already a, a really big price for just wanting to keep our land and just wanted to protect our people. That's yeah. true. Well, that's great to hear. And you, you might know I follow sort of military matters and write about that. So yeah. it's been, it's been one of the big 
two big revelations. One is that the Russian war machine is nothing like as effective as we thought it was. And probably no. even Putin thought it was. He was probably being lied to. It was disorganized and their logistics were awful. And secondly, the sudden and dramatic resolve of the Ukrainian people was, was a sight to behold. So that combination does give hope. I mean, it's already driven the Russians to limit their their ambitions yeah. now. Uh, well, I mean, our heart goes out to you. You look incredibly together and calm uh, and sounding calm, Julia, but I'm sure it's been utter turmoil for you. So you have our, our love and support and the hope that things work out and you're back in uh, back in Chernobyl. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, in Chernobyl. Chernobyl. Yeah. Not Chernobyl, but Chernobyl. Um, Chernobyl yeah. Hopefully in months, not years, but um, fingers crossed. We'll stay in touch about that as well. But... Shall we talk about happier things? Should we talk about business and covers, uh, book covers? And we'll talk about a, an organization called Mibelart. Yes, that's so you, right. you better yeah. describe Mibelart to us. Yeah. So Mibelart is a company, uh, a book cover design company. We have uh, six in-house designers and uh, project managers, marketers, uh, business development manager. I <laughs> and uh, two founders, but uh, we have a person who writes content for our blog also, and uh, we are all really happy to work together and to pr uh, produce so many beautiful covers. So we create custom uh, photographic covers as well as illustrated covers, and some of our designers actually already uh, learned DAS and uh, working and creating DAS models for the book covers. So better explain what DAS is. DAS is uh, DAS modeling is just a technology with which you can create faces and uh, like people and also environment. So it's not photography. It's not uh, illustration. It's 3D modeling. So you don't need models uh, as in humans yeah. and photographs. Yeah. You can do it without yeah. that. Okay. Okay. And, um, is it a Ukrainian company? Yeah, it's a fully Ukrainian company. All our people are in Ukraine, in two cities, Lviv and Ternopil. Uh, now, uh, most of them are staying in Ukraine and uh, working despite of the sirens we hear all the day. Like, of course, if there is a siren and uh, danger, they go in shelters and then they come back home and uh, do the work. Actually, I wonder how it works too, <laughs> but our people continue to work. At the first day of the war, uh, we had an urgent meeting and our founders had said that, um, I mean, they were really supportive. They say that uh, who cannot work can I mean, of course, cannot work. They will receive like the money paid. Uh, who wants to go and fight can go and fight. Who um, can work uh, can, will continue to work. And uh, of course, that all the revenue we have, we will give up for, we will give uh, the military, Ukrainian army, because it's just the most important. And that, I guess, was the biggest motivation for all of our designers and all the other people to keep working because everything we make, that's how we can help because not everyone can help, uh, fight. And I know that many of us also do volunteer work together, help together like things for the people who fled so so the company at the moment is being run to help yeah. the ukrainian effort yeah that's true and um and many i was surprised how our designers managed to do that and project managers but we are really keeping a great uh, score and we have a great uh, results and uh, i wouldn't say we have um, produced less covers or something so we just um, keep in keep in work Okay, so tell me about the design process for, Process from an author point of view. What does an author need to do to commission it? What information do you need? Yeah, that depends on the um, of whether the author has the idea already or not, because we have several uh, order forms that they can free, fill out. Um, you can uh, like author can go to the website and choose the package that he needs. For example, uh, photographic uh, cover design or illustrated cover design, and the process is a little bit different. But uh, first of all, that's filling out the creative brief. 
and uh, then uh, our project manager will, would be contacting uh, the client and uh, maybe asking some more questions if there is not enough information. And then the order info goes to the designer and designer to the assigned designer who is most skilled for the project. And then designer um, creates a book cover within five business days. Uh, but now it's 10 business days because of the war. So, of course, uh, we need more time to make it. And uh, the designer creates um, uh, the cover, sends it to the client, and the client can take a look and say if uh, they want to change something or or maybe another concept or something like that. So we offer unlimited revisions, and then it goes back and forth until the client is happy. In my, most cases, it's all actually like um, one, two revisions until the final result. And, uh, and then we send the final files when uh, the client is happy. Uh, for the photographic cover design, we don't take any deposit. So a client gets watermarks, work, watermarked uh, files. And when the client is happy, uh, then we send an invoice and then client uh, gets final files without watermarks. Okay, so I've got a couple of questions. So one is unlimited revisions. This sounds to me like a dangerous thing for a company to offer in this field because whilst most people might ask for one or two, I know every cover designer tells me that they get fairly regularly clients that it can be quite difficult and it can go on a long time. Yeah, that's true. But I would say the percent uh, is very small of the people who require like really lots of revisions. And uh, but we continue working. We try to figure out what's 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 wrong. What should we do? We try to communicate and find the the best solution. And if it's really isn't working out, I mean, sometimes it just doesn't work out. Sometimes. So uh, sometimes we offer, for example, uh, another designer because we have six of them and we can offer another style of designer if that's uh, necessary. Uh, or we can give like we can just say goodbye if, if for both sides it doesn't work now, we can just say goodbye and not um, take any money for this. Uh, but I would say that, I mean, it, um, it's worth it because most of the projects are uh, finished quickly. Most of the projects don't require many revisions. And if we need to uh, spend some more time uh, with some people uh, and it's a bit harder to get there, it's okay. Because um, with this model, we can have trust with our clients. And many clients and many new clients can know that they can try and um, like it's, it's okay if something doesn't work out and that we're ready to work until it's perfect yeah well, that's very laudable and it sounds like a good way of running the company in terms of the photography then so if people do want photographs you use presumably yeah. the same stock image companies that everyone uses shutterstock etc do you and yeah 20 uh near stock uh shutterstock deposit photos like we use several stocks and of course use photography but we also also always change it uh, a lot because uh, yeah we want the covers to be unique mm. of course some faces are repeating of course because the stock photos that's why we started uh, to do desk modeling to avoid this um repeating faces and the the desk modeling is there the price implication i guess is that people will pay extra for the photographs because they're paying for that licensing or if they chose a das model that's modeled internally they wouldn't have to pay that extra royalty uh, no, at, at the moment, like designer decides that, that so we like uh, take a creative brief, a description of the character, if the character is needed in the cover design. And then um, like the designer looks for the possibilities in photography sometimes and the designer decides if he wants, uh, for example, to create that. But in most cases, you really cannot say. Um, so for now, we work like that. Some of the... Some of the book covers are made with desk modeling and some with book covers. And maybe in the future, we will divide it into packages. But for now, uh, we're just um, not ready to divide it. We, we are just mixing it together and trying what's, what works best for this special, for this project. And how much does it cost? Uh, the, the book cover, ebook cover costs 150 and uh, photographic design. Uh, and... Um, U U.S. dollars, sorry. Yeah, U.S. Yeah. dollars. And uh, 
ebook and print cost two hundred dollars U.S. dollars, and that's for photographic slash desk modeling. Um, and um, like desk model is like a bonus because we're learning it still. And uh, I think uh, in some cases, when the designer sees they can do that, he did he does that. Yeah. But uh, we learn we call it photographic cover design because we're not ready to make a separate package. And uh, also there is illustrated cover design. Then the price depends on the styles because we also have. Uh, six illustrators who works in different styles and uh, the price depends on the style. So it starts with a uh, 390 and then goes uh, up depending on the complexity of the project. Now, in terms of what the author wants, authors, some authors, I think, in my experience, they really understand the role of the cover and how important it is to match your genre, meet reader expectations. Some authors don't and we see that in some of the examples that get posted into the groups they sort of want to fill the the cover with their story detail do you work with authors to steer them towards what's what you think will be a more commercially successful cover even if the author doesn't necessarily come with that idea yes i mean uh, in most cases authors um uh propose their idea and if a uh, designer sees that it's not really good fit and he wants to change it and uh, he uh, offers a, an alternative concept uh, and he can also like make it two versions, for example, to show or he can uh, like a slightly mock-ups or, or so. And uh, so in most cases, yeah, we like uh, try to speak. In some cases, authors really are set up on the idea and that we can, um, of course, create it. But um, in most cases, design also. Also, a lot of uh, these uh, authors say that they trust us and that's just an idea and you can create like what you like and uh, it goes from there. Um, we try to educate our clients through our blog. So our um, uh, writers write an articles, write articles about the book cover design, uh, the, the fonts and etc. the colors, how to come up with ideas, what should... Um, should you take into account when you think about a cover concept? So we try to educate our clients and educate uh, like everybody, um, try to prepare the information so that uh, others can understand what's what works and what not. And of course, if, um, if the designer sees a better idea, he can tell it and we can discuss it with a client. Yeah, I mean, it can be a tricky conversation, can't it? But um, do you prefer it when somebody comes along and says, I've written a, a military thriller, it needs to have this aircraft on the front, but from that, that point onwards, I leave it up to you? Or do you prefer somebody to come along saying, I think the aircraft should be here, I'd like a figure there and a hangar here from 1965? Which one would you prefer? I think uh, all the designers would prefer an author who will come and say, I trust you completely. Please create a cover uh, as you see. And of course, in this case, we just want a little bit more information because it's really a tricky part. Um, I personally say, uh, think that uh, author and uh, designer should work together more because author knows what kind of message he wants to communicate and what kind of feeling should um, the book cover uh, evoke and uh, design knows what will fit for the market and what can be actually implemented. So uh, I think it's important that um, in in the creative brief that author describes um, uh, more about the key messages, the key elements of the book, the characters. And when we have enough information, then I think it's really good when a designer had some creativity and can create a cover that will fit the market. Uh, but sometimes it's actually mo a lot of uh, their, our authors actually can come and uh, they already know what they want. They already done a research. They already set up on the idea. And that's actually most of them are pretty good. And um, so we work from there. I would say that, um, but uh, our designers also do a research, always do a research. And it's com if it's completely doesn't work, we always say. Yeah. And yeah. how's the company doing? And when did you start? And how's it how's it growing? Uh, we start in 2015. And now it's been, yeah, like seven years, seven years. Uh, we've grown a lot because we started from a really small Ukrainian company. And uh, now we had like only 10 people in the team. 
and now it's uh, over 20 and uh, we, we continue growing. We continue adding new services. We also were, uh, offer formatting, a logo and branding. We have a logo designer and we continue doing uh, what we can do because, for example, we don't want to do editing because we are not natives, uh, but we can do a design and formatting. So that's what we do and we grow. And I would say the it's going really well for yeah. us. And it's owned by two people. Do you say the two founders? Yeah, two founders. They are Ukrainians from Ternopil. And we are always in touch. And they are super supportive because every meeting we have some ideas how to, what to improve. Every meeting we have some ideas for some maybe new services or the process change uh, to make it more effective. And they are always super supportive. And we can really create a lot of things. And we have a creative director already also, and that's, we hadn't had a, a, a creative director at the start. And now we have, and it really helps a lot because now we can brainstorm the ideas more and creative director can help with the concept of it's very complex and a creative director also invests a lot of time in um, skills improvement of our designers so they can learn more techniques and so that we always have uh, like a diversity in styles and uh, in genres that we can do. Your your founders are hands on. Are they they run the company, or they sort of sit back and do other companies now as well? Uh, no, they are actually very engaged in mobile art. And um, yeah, we have we have uh, also uh, created uh, get covers. Uh, and uh, like a part of the team is also engaged in get co get covers, but get covers had another designers. Uh, but yeah, they work on two companies, get covers and mobile art. Okay, so what's what's the difference between the companies? Uh, the get covers has junior designers, and they invest less time. It's like for more affordable designs okay. and more simple designs. And uh, yeah, the, the main goal is to make book covers uh, as affordable as possible. And Mibel Art uh, tends to also create affordable, but also very, very quality covers. So uh, the designers uh, at Mibel Art have years of experience and uh, they invest much more time in the design than the designers at Get, Get Covers. Yeah. Do you notice a lot of trends and changing fashions in book covers? What works maybe worked five years ago or two years ago even doesn't work today well uh yeah trends are changing not very fast not like every year but they are changing we can see more uh, silhouettes in the designs and i love that very much because you cannot then you avoid this um many uh similar faces on yeah. the book covers. uh also i like how bold and large fonts are right now on many covers of course it doesn't work for all the genres but for many it works and i guess this trend was already but it came came back and uh, the cover with minimalistic style nature inspired covers are also very trendy i think maybe due to COVID also because we all want to um to see more nature more outdoors also, uh, the very creative, creative titles, interrupted titles, and the titles combined with pictures are also very trendy. Um, John, uh, John uh, typography is also very good. We have uh, actually um, drawn uh, some some typography, some covers, and it really uh, it's really fun and it's really creative because you don't need the font; you can draw draw so it. Literally, and literally drawn by a designer. <laughs> Draw it and uh, like a monk in a Bible in the Middle Ages, uh, hieroglyphics or, yeah. or calligraphy. It can be fun and also, uh, I mean, <laughs> it can be also uh, drawn as uh, tree branches. For example, we had a cover recently that a title is like uh, uh, made of tree branches. Uh, it's drawn by our illustrated. It's also great, great custom typography. And yeah, of course, it should be noticeable on Amazon and it's really complex task to do. But yeah. when it uh, works, then it's wonderful. Of course, it's got to work in thumbnail as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, naturally. Yeah, of course. we. Uh, and uh, desk covers, as I said, uh, the market is oversaturated with the same type of uh, photography and there are not a lot of the new 
photos, stock photos. So DAS modeling is improving and it's important that we have new faces and that we don't, we are not limited to this, what stocks can offer. Do you do your own photography as well? No, we have thought about that, but not yet. Maybe, maybe later. I know it's tempting for cover designers to have uh, a connection with a ph photographic studio to say, I need, because you, you know, you can search and never get quite what you want. We certainly had that with my first, my first cover. Oh, if you're watching on YouTube, that the figure there, where this, all the stock photos were the wrong clothing, mm -hmm. like Second World War, and this is 1960s. It's really difficult to get the right image. So in the end, somebody had to dress up and <laughs> we took that photograph. And of course, that's me, if you look carefully. But Oh, that's wonderful. We, actually did, we did some photos in the office when we were back in the office. Uh, like, yeah, I also paused one time. Uh, because there was not a right image, but it's really fun. And but we've, now we've both been immortalized on book yeah. covers. There you go. Yeah. Wonderful. Our claims to fame. Good. Yeah. So do you think the war in Ukraine is going to change things in terms of the way business operates in Ukraine? I mean, one thing <clears throat> I think has happened is there seems to be a bit of a spotlight on Ukrainian businesses, which is great. Have you felt that? Yeah, I found that. I'm actually very surprised of how Ukrainian people can be united. How can we be together? Can, can, how can we help? I'm surprised because, but also it's really a psychological shock because uh, like the world is for many of us, or for Ukrainians, is black and white now because you need to pick sides and you, uh, you, the war brings um, the best and the worst in people. And some people do their best. They help constantly and uh, they sacrifice their time and efforts and everything. And some people, of course, uh, also can bring, uh, bring uh, can do uh, worse things. And so the world is really psychologically hard, but I think um, it will filter the society a lot right now and uh, I also I see how my friends are helping I see how my friends want to help the economy and me too and I see how many businesses are are not giving up many business owners are not giving up they move into West Ukraine and they try to keep up and try to um, to go and to work to keep working because it's very important so that our economy doesn't shut down uh, because it's it's a lot of damage has been made and of course years to recover will be needed and um, i think it will it will be better than before when yeah. it's when it's done it's that thing about war 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 is not clean cut and clear it's messy and nuanced and horrible it's more horrible than i could ever imagine when i learned about war in uh, when i was in school i could never think that i will re actually live in war and i could never imagine how really horrible is that in all in all cases i mean there is nothing good about war and uh, i could never like imagine how hard it is and i could never imagine how how many lives will be lost how many i mean it's not only of course the most horrible thing that people are dying uh, many children are without parents many parents are without children married people live apart and many people can never go back to the their home because the home is destroyed and it's not only materialist materialistic things it's not only about money it's about the memories childhood memories and it's all gone all gone and also what's really hard is that there are so many lies out there in the internet it's really hard when your people are killed and when it's not only photos in the internet you have people your uh, people you know there and they are telling that's the truth that the Russian soldiers did really kill these people, really rape this woman and really did horrible things. And then at the same time, you can go to the internet and you can listen to what they say in Russia mm. and how they like turn it upside down and then how they say we did this to our people. And it's really psychologically horrible, uh, horrible to listen to. And you need to like, you said, I'm really together uh, and i'm really uh, is i'm together i'm a stress resistant person but sometimes it's really hard to not to cry about yeah, it of course but it is. We, need to, we need to hold together we need to um to be resistant to this propaganda we need to be resistant to these lies we need to not be aggressive because that's what they want 
and we need to live our lives and help our economy. We need to help our people. And uh, that's why I, I don't, I don't lo- allow myself to be t- to just cry or to, to say how bad uh, things are. Just no, it doesn't help. Well, I guess, um, I guess you discover things about other people. We also discover something about yourself when, uh, when these things happen. And you're doing exactly the right thing, keeping this company going, keeping your focus on that. It's the best thing for the future. And for the record, uh, in this part of the world, and I think in the United States and all Western Europe, nobody believes a word Vladimir Putin says about anything that's happening in Ukraine. We are very, very well aware of that misinformation that, that does the rounds. I see it, by the way, on my TikTok stream. Russians come in and say stuff, and you just think, yeah. yeah. People jump on them quite quickly. But So, uh, you know... I, I can't I can't remember in recent times there's always a bit of controversy around conflicts like in the Middle East and so on but I can't remember such a clear-cut well of support for one country that's clearly on the wrong side of this so that's that's the case and that's the world direction is actually very interesting because I know many people who really want to give weapons they really want to stop all this and many people who don't want to give weapons because they are against a war. We are also against the war. We also don't want to fight. We also don't want to kill. But what do you do when you know that it's not just that they will come and say, okay, you are in Russia now. Here is the, our people and you can live uh, your lives. We wouldn't want that as well. But they will not just do that. They will kill us. Yeah. And that's not a matter of war. Uh, it's a matter of surviving. It's a genocide. Uh, genocide. I don't know how to pronounce that. Genocide, this. yeah. Genocide. It's really, um, really needed right now to protect ourselves. And we need these weapons because they will not stop. And they're not like people who want to stop. They want more land, like Putin wants more land. And But, but from, I, uh, from, from the start, I thought that's only Putin. And I couldn't believe that actually civilians, Russians, support that. Yeah. Now that's not true. I couldn't believe in that. And after, because I understand Russian, I speak Ukrainian and I understand Russian because of many things that I've heard personally. And uh, you can, we can hear it all in social media. And we can understand that it's not only Putin, it's the whole nation. So, and they actually want this, uh, the majority. Yeah. I, well, they're being fed a very particular set of, uh, of lies, in fact. Uh, well, I mean, it's uh, it's such a difficult time for you. Uh, I'm full of admiration that you, you're certainly carrying yourself with, with confidence and calmness, which uh, I think is uh, very, very admirable. Who knows how any of us would react in the situation and what you've been through. We wish you the best, Julia. Uh, Thank you. We should we should say I mentioned Mibble Art a few times quickly yeah. at the beginning. We should spell it out and let people know exactly <laughs> where they can find it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you can find us at just mebelart.com. Uh, you can Google mebelart. You can also find me, Julia Rizdebutko. It's not easy to pronounce my name as well uh, on Facebook. But I guess I know me, many people have heard about mebelart already, and you can just um, yeah say mebelart. Uh, write down mebelart.com and find us uh, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook, all social medias. It's m i b l a r t dot com. Yeah, that's what's easier for you than for me. Thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> that's okay. Well, Julia, look, thank you so much. We'll definitely have you back on soon. We wish you all the best uh, personally, which is the most important thing for you, your colleagues and your family and your friends uh, over the next few months. And uh, yeah, let's stay in touch and we'll do what we can. Thank you so much. This is the Self Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. There you go, Julia Ros de Bunchko, and we uh, wish her the best and her colleagues. Uh, I tell you what, Mark, we sometimes think we have problems uh, how busy we are in the logistics of running our company, but can you imagine your country suddenly being plunged into a war with an aggressive neighbour, but keeping your company going and keeping uh, all those people employed? Well, I can, actually, because um, our, our Oksana, who's beneath me right now, um, I our guest and her son from Ukraine um, are also trying to continue to run their company. Her husband's in um, Kolomaya, which is near Lviv, and um, they're still trying to run their company in very, very difficult circumstances. You know, um, from, from them, their perspective, it's impossible to get fuel at the moment. So I know he queued for four hours the other day to get petrol and wasn't able to. So I don't know how you run a, a pharmacy business when you can't deliver your your um, medicines. So yes, incredibly difficult. and. You know, one of the things 
you know, we, we found in the pandemic was um, an online business, be that what we do with courses and, and, and conferences um, or with selling books online, it is fairly resistant to disruption. Um, and so um, it's great to see um, Myblart, Miblart, um, continuing to, you know, to, to offer work to designers and to and have covers created for authors um, and, and long may that continue. So, and, you know, good good for them and you know, I'm thinking of them and everybody else. Yeah, and uh, we'll remember, of course, Anthony Ein, who we had on the podcast a few weeks ago, on the show a few weeks ago. He's Anton. Uh, he, uh, yes. Ant- Anton. Who, sorry? Anton. Anton. Anton Ein, sorry, yeah. What did I say? Anthony. Anthony. Okay. Anton Ein, um, who's in, also in Lviv. And I saw him um, posting on social media a couple of days ago saying that you may as well be in Kiev to be in mm. Lviv, the amount of uh, rocket attacks and missile attacks that are happening. Missile yeah. attacks, I should say, yeah. probably in Lviv. Um, okay, yes, our thoughts go to them and uh, go out to them. And uh, we're very happy to support and help uh, Julia by featuring Mobile Art uh, on the show today and wish them well. Right, that is it, Mark. We have busy schedules ahead of us uh, today. Um, that's it for the course. Don't forget, you can hopefully still get tickets for the live show. We'd lovely to see you in London in June. It's going to be glorious. Of course, June's always glorious in London. Um, it's in Wimbledon, never rains there. Uh, okay. Selfpublishingformula.com forward slash SPS Live. That's it, I think. Thank you, team, behind the scenes. All that remains for me to say is it's a goodbye from him. And a goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye. Get show notes, the podcast archive, and free resources to boost your writing career at selfpublishingshow.com. Join our thriving Facebook group at selfpublishingshow.com forward slash Facebook. Support the show at patreon.com forward slash self-publishing show and join us next week for more help and inspiration so that you can make your mark as a successful indie author publishing is changing so get your words into the world and join the revolution with the self-publishing show